So today we're going to talk about liquidity. Uh, for years you would have heard us talk about uh, keeping your portfolio liquid, but obviously there's, uh, there are quite a few uh, areas that you need to look at when you're considering the liquidity of a portfolio. Um, of course, the first thing we need to look at is cash. Uh, and in cash, we're really looking at uh, two things. Uh, one, of course, being uh, the availability of your capital. Uh, if buying this particular property is going to erode all of your capital away and you've got no more buffer left, perhaps you need to be really looking at that purchase uh, because if there is any um, cash constraints uh, over the coming months, uh, then you would be in a um, uh, dire situation, uh, especially with today's finance market. So uh, it's important that you don't um, use up all of your capital uh, and that way you're keeping uh, some liquidity available so that the proverbial uh, hot water system, if that uh, does um, crash and burn, uh, then you've got money there. Uh, the other bit of liquidity that I want to talk to you about is obviously um, keeping the equity that you uh, acquire in the property liquid. So what I mean by that is going back to your lender and perhaps setting up a line of credit on the available equity uh, that you create in the property, whether it is via renovations or whether it is uh, purely because of market movement. Uh, and the reason you want to do this is that uh, it allows you to uh, be more reactive to opportunities down the track. Uh, and also when lending changes down the track, you are the person that has got the most cash and usually at that time the people with with available cash are able to capitalize on opportunity um, obviously you you need to be choosing a lender where the lender is allowing you to access the equity so this is something that you need to evaluate well ahead of time uh, preferably when you are purchasing the property itself so coming on to lenders themselves uh, we want to make sure that the property you're buying is appealing to a large number of lenders. And the reason we do that is over a period of time, you may want to change lenders or you may also want to offload the property. So if the property is only going to be funded by specific lenders, and a good example of this would be studio apartments in the inner city. Uh, and you will find that studio apartments during the, the different phases of the property cycle will have uh, a lot harder lending, especially if the property market is slowing down. Uh, and therefore, if you were wanting to offload that property at that point in time, you'll find that there are very few buyers around, purely, purely because that uh, they're not able to get funding to buy, purchase the property off you. Uh, so obviously we need to be looking at the lender and, and how versatile they are, uh, what products they have, and uh, equally importantly, uh, looking at how much uh, they will lend against that property. Uh, being that some lenders may lend you only 60% of the value of the property, where others may lend you 80% of the value of the property. So you need to be looking at that from a liquidity point of view. And then finally, of course, the property itself in terms of where it sits in the suburb, where it sits in the state, and where it sits in the property market is really important. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, you should not be buying a unique property within your portfolio. Uh, in other words, if you were to go wrong or if you were to offload the property at, at any point in time, whether it is planned or unplanned, uh, you need to have the property appealing to the masses. In other words, it needs to have some level of owner occupier appeal uh, and certainly uh, a level of uh, appeal to the everyday investor uh, so that uh, you've got a large pool of people that you can uh, on sell the property to when you're ready to do so. Thanks so much for watching. For more great insights, head over to our website, rightpropertygroup.com.au. You can also tune into our podcast, Investing Insights, or follow us on all socials. We look forward to seeing you again soon.